There are four broad patterns, paradigms we've called them, into which our right versus right dilemmas fall. And I'll put that up on my next slide here. Uh, you, you can see that list very clearly. First, at the top, and it doesn't need to be at the top, but I have to use some kind of order when I put them on a the slide. Uh, there are questions of truth versus loyalty. Now, the way it's on the slide there is a bit deceptive because you can see there's a capital T on the truth. And I don't really mean that. Uh, we're really not talking about great big metaphysical divine truth. We're talking about truth telling in a particular situation. And if you doubt, I, I, I don't have too much doubt that there are probably very few situations where loyalty overcomes great big capital T truth. But there are plenty where loyalty needs to take primacy over small t truth, truth telling in a particular situation. And if you doubt that, remember the last time your favorite aunt came down the stairs dressed for the ball and said to you, don't you just love my gown? And what did you say? You had the choice between truth and loyalty. And I don't know who you are, so I don't know what you said, but in some cases you either reduced your aunt to tears or you let her go by with a, with a, a, a nice little passing fib. Uh, more seriously, the fighter pilot shot down behind enemy lines, captured by the enemy, interrogated, and asked, where are your buddies? Is under, I think, no particular, no philosophical and metaphysical imperative to answer honestly by saying, oh, I cannot tell a lie, they're hiding over there in that bush. Right? I don't think that's what we thought truth-telling was. And those of you, of course, who are in uh, various situations in HR, in legal, in health work, and all of that, you know very well. There's all kinds of stuff you can't say. You know it, and you just can't tell it. So be thoughtful about this question of truth versus loyalty. You, you may want people to default, and, and often they will default and should default, to even the lowercase truth-telling. But there will be those times when loyalty, especially if you're in a position, in an administrative position in an organization, and you've got your own staff and your own clients to, to or customers, whatever they are, to, to look out for, where loyalty is gonna, ha gonna have to trump the telling of all you know on that particular occasion. That's one of the tough ones that people fall into. How do you balance this whole question of truth versus loyalty? Second one on the list talks about the di distinction between individual and community. What's right for the broad group may have serious downside consequences for the individual. And yet if you do what's right for the individual, you may be damaging the group itself in all kinds of ways. You've got, and this may be a story that resonates one way or another with every one of you somewhere in your past, you've got at your school a wonderful woman. She's two years away from retiring. She has been with the school forever. She's been there for 35 years. She lives all by herself. She has no family. She has nothing else in the world that interests her except the school and her six cats at home. She has never made it into the digital age. She simply can't master computers. She was very good in the old days, 15, 20 years ago, getting on the phone and working with a sharp little pencil and doing that stuff. But the times have swept past her. She's now on a team. She's dragging down the whole team itself. What do you do? The needs of the individual are clear. For goodness sakes, find a way to keep her on. It would devastate her if you were suddenly to turn her loose and say, sorry, there's no, no job here left for you now. On the other hand, the needs of the community are clearly being impaired by her presence. If you had somebody who could do half the work that she's doing in a digital age on that team, that team would just soar. How are you going to sort that out? Right versus right. Third on the list are questions of short-term versus long-term. An issue that hit me every time I took a dollar out of my wallet until our youngest daughter mercifully graduated from college. Where you know that you've got to spend it now so you all can eat, and you've got to put it in savings so you can continue the education, and you can't do both with the same dollar, and they're both right. Now, and that's a, that, that's a good one to illustrate the fact that don't imagine that your solution to these paradigms, your solution to these dilemmas, in the long term is going to be found by you finally discovering for your own soul which of these you can camp out on forever and just stick with and always default to that side. Wouldn't that be nice if there were such a system? 
The fact is, if you always default to the short term, there will be no long term. And if you always default to the long term, you will starve. There's got to be this balance of the short term and long term. Investment versus consumption, you might say. It's a you know, simple uh, economic term in that, in, in that sense. And the last one, which needs no explanation, justice versus mercy, needs no explanation for anyone who's ever raised a teenager. And we're talking about stuff that goes a lot deeper than the dog ate my homework. You know, how do you sort this out where the expectation, which is what justice is all about, think about the way courts work, they work on the base of precedence. Expectation pulls you in one direction, exception pulls you in another. And again, it is the sworn duty of teenagers to, to persuade you that nearly everything is an exception. And you're going to have to say, no, most things are expectations, and there's a few exceptions. But once again, you can't camp out on one side or the other. It is never true that everything will be the expectation. There's always got to be room for this exception. 